Hey everybody, this is Sheets. And once again, I have Michael Brave Jayhawk Jensen here. We're going to be talking about what occurred in week 10 of Survivor. And then we're going to talk about what's going to happen in week, or we think is going to happen in week 11, and then maybe beyond. Just to kind of recap, um, this is kind of like the opposite of last year. Like last year, I was kind of done like relatively early, but I as a trooper continued on these uh, these podcasts and we rooted and 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 got uh, and got uh, Mike home for a six figure win that went all the way into the playoffs. So this year, uh, Michael's returning the favor, having uh, having busted pretty early. He's been keeping his brain semi sharp. Uh, That's right, brain sharp with uh, moving along, and uh, we're gonna get go- we're gonna get started. So I have a couple of things I would like to say about Week Ten to some of the people in the Discord as well. So Week Ten uh, for, for everybody might remember uh i have two pools i'm in one that's been in doubles since week nine it had one week of doubles in five and now it's been in doubles since week in it had one week of doubles in week five uh where everybody took detroit miami except for me except for us which is very important uh and then in week nine starting then all the way to the end it's in doubles the another pool that i'm in and that by the way i'll tell you what what happened but that and, and the other pool that i'm in is single picks conditionally Meaning that as long as, you know, the, the, there's a decent amount of carnage throughout the year, it remains single. But if there's still a bunch of people left in week 16, 17, and 18, depending on how many are left, we go into doubles. So week 10 in doubles, we talked about this last week. And I uh, we finally finally got a little bit of, of luck. Okay, not luck. I mean, I guess justice is the word I'm looking for. It. Um, <laughs> I love that, justice. You know, so, so we, played, uh, we played Chicago and Dallas. Um, Chicago, uh, you know, struggled for a while because, you know, what they're Chicago. They're a three-point favorite. What do you want, you know? Uh, they struggled. They got it done uh, on Thursday. And then we had Dallas. Uh, 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 there was literally not a, sh- a shred of sweat in that, uh, minus 400 points against the, uh, against the Giants. Let me jump in really quick. What was Chicago's pick percentage in doubles yeah. compared to some of the other teams? Yeah, I'm getting there. So, so okay. Chicago, I was afraid was going to be about 20% owned or so, but it turns out they were only 11. Okay. So, so it was yeah. not the, Thursday, I, man, Thursday. It was not the end of the world. And I was between, and then I was kind of like struggling after pitch after Chicago came in, I was seeing if I had the had the balls to we had to pull the trigger on Pittsburgh and to really just like push Dallas and really go for. But we decided that the Dallas minus eighteen or whatever it was was just too much to pass up, and we just we just we just went with it. And Pittsburgh, by the way, was about fifteen percent owned on uh, on Sunday. Okay, so oh, they, that's it. Wow. Yes, that's that's great. Then that means some of the better teams were picked more than right. I would have thought. So we we got we got very very finally got a little bit of justice in that that people went on the Bengals, okay, despite mm-hmm. having watched our our show, they all decided to go play the Bengals anyway, um, and they lost. They were only only twenty percent on. I thought they'd be more. Um, yeah. But in doubles, it seems so much more important to save teams like that, you know, for twelve and fourteen or whatever. That I guess people not everybody did it. Um, but then, then the real, the real cool stuff happened. Like the really strong pivots lost too. Like Baltimore, people who kept putting off Baltimore and, and taking that risk so that they could hammer him week ten, which was a tremendous path and a tremendous play. They went down, you know, uh, and that was a that was like double digits. And then, you know, if, if it wasn't enough, uh, Buffalo, which was like an elite play. Like if you were able to save Buffalo until last week and get them at like 5% ownership, wherever the hell they were. I mean, that was an amazing play, but they went down as well, you know, at the end of the day. So that, that that's the best way to go out, though, in yep. terms of how it feels when you have yep. no choice but yep. to take a, a team that you've been saving for a certain spot. Well, well, we're going to talk about that, the no choice thing, because I want to I want to I want to reach out to some of the discord about this. So mm-hmm. that pool went got crushed. And so now that pool that had 8,200 to start had now like 160. Okay. So, so with, with doubles every week that, that, that doesn't have a lot longer to go. Let's put it that way. So I wanted to bring up, um, and in this single pick pool, we just went with Dallas. So the, um, I want to reach out. There's a couple of people in the discord who were very upset. They, they said, Oh, I know I should have taken Dallas. I took Buffalo, you know, and I cannot believe I did it. 
I took Buffalo. I should have taken Dallas or I took Buffalo. I knew I didn't trust them. Vision game. And I don't even know what they were talking about. Like anti con whatever it is they were talking about. Um, you can't, as you were, as Mike was saying, you can't be like that. Okay. Believe me, if I were in your position, I would have taken Buffalo literally every single time. Uh, I was fortunate in that I played bad earlier and I played Buffalo. You know what I mean? <laughs> and because I played bad, I didn't have a chance to make the good play uh, yet, uh, uh, this, this week. So you, you just can't be results oriented in this game. Um, uh, and, and so that, that's all, that's all I have to say about that. Do you have any comments about week 10 before we move on to week 11? I was looking at my notes. I definitely did not write it down, but I, you know, there's been several weeks this season where I, I like the, the the biggest favorite at least at least three times. Week two, week three, and this past week with Dallas. If I had Buffalo available between Buffalo and Dallas, I would have definitely taken Dallas and taken Ooh, Buffalo okay. in eleven because you're looking at purely as looking purely at your a two game slate. Your win percentage is going to be higher going Dallas first because they were 17, 18 point favorites. Whereas they're only a 11, nine and a half. And 12. 11, yeah. Like, what are they this week against Carolina? Well, forget that. They're also nine and a half in week 12. But they're 10. Yeah. That, that, wow. yeah. I, I, I think I would have rather kept Buffalo for, uh, for 12 and used Dallas this past week or da- or for Buffalo this week. But I, I, my brain didn't think that way just because I, I, I had Buffalo gone week five or something like that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, let me, let me, may as well share this. Let's, let's see what the, uh, I wonder if they still have the results summary from last week. Uh, no, it's all oh, wait, Can I do this? Yeah. So in week 10 there, it started off with uh, 708 going into the week and 536 got blown up. Um, 450. That was week. Oh, they, oh, they did play all these since That's right. So 450 of the seven – remember, it's double, so you have to, like, double the the whatever. Yeah. So 450 in, in total of the 708 had – wow, look at that. Because you have to – remember, it doubles the 708 to, to reach whatever. Um, Dallas went – Pittsburgh was very popular. Chicago, like, only a third of the ownership or half the ownership in Pittsburgh. And the Buffalo – the Buffalo-Baltimore, those, those are always help, man. Those Buffalo, Baltimore, are just whatever, and even the little little Atlanta guys, people try to sneak past with Atlanta against Arizona. I have anything, I probably would have liked Arizona a little better. Um, uh, because uh, anyway, uh, finally we got a little bit of 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 justice in that the bad play, that being Cincinnati, um, went down. Uh, and that's that's all really really good news. Um, okay, so week number eleven. And for that matter, like for me, week number 12, I mean, we're, 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 we're locked and loaded, but, but what, let's talk about that. As I mentioned before, when you get to this point in the season, um, or even a little, maybe a little later also, that you'll see some pretty skewed EVs in, uh, in, in Survivor Grid because you're going to see big favorites that are just nobody has. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is you have to, you know, more than anything else, it just depends on what your pool is. I mean, like, it's hard for us to say, like, what the best play is because it really just depends on you, on you ha- what you have available, who everybody else has available, and, 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 and such, okay? Um, I can say, now this is actually one, one interesting dynamic about this week is that, it's so funny, we, everybody that was sharp or a lot of people sharp took Washington in week one because they knew they would never have, you have, you have to take Washington again. Until it went to week like five or six. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And then week five, everybody had to play him again. But at least they knew then that that was going to be the last. Oh, well, now here we go again. Um, so, That's pretty, incre- it's pretty incredible. So, well, uh, you know, thank, well. thanks. Uh, thank, thank Tommy DeVito, you know, among other, th- among other people um, for the, the Giants just completely just uh, becoming mm. a, uh, a dumpster fire to, uh, to, to put it, to put it mildly. So uh, you now having a 35% owned, uh, Washington team, uh, and their EV is not particularly great because they are thirty five percent owned. But the question is, is is you know, how 
what you play really depends on what you have left. So I'm, I'm just going to share like what we're doing, like the doubles. Cause for us, as I mentioned earlier, we faded San Francisco when they were a lock and everybody played them. We faded Detroit, Miami in doubles when they were a lock so that, so that we, so we have them and now we're in doubles in a week that looks like, like this. And we have Miami and San Francisco at no percent ownership. Uh, yeah, no, no discussion. Good, good luck, everybody. You know what I mean? Like, feel, feel free. You know, uh, you're gonna get a, a million, per, well, a million percent. Off. There are 135 people of the 170 left that have Washington available. I presume they will all, or at least uh, almost all, be on. I'm Washington. sorry. How, how how many people have them? Yeah. So they uh they have week 11 teams available. Um, there are 175 left. There's 108 that have them available. Yeah, we're pretty close to 108. I think are going are, are going to be playing. Them. Now I'm not. You can't really break down. I actually I did for a little bit. Like what other choices people have, um, and and the other two teams that are going to be extremely popular are Jacksonville. Well, Jacksonville for openers, um, and Houston. Like those mm-hmm. are literally the only two teams that because no one's got Detroit left. No one has Dallas left. No one has San Francisco. No one has Miami. And there's Washington, no one has Buffalo left, and it's just between – it's going to be ja- – and nobody has Baltimore left either. So it's just going to be – and everybody burned the LAC in eight. So it's really going to be between Buff- Jacksonville, Houston, and Washington <coughs> that's going to take up all the ownership. Now, Washington's minus 10. Okay, can't do anything about that. But Jacksonville and Houston are both like very, very whatever. They're minus six, something like that, minus four. And we are just going to take Miami, San Francisco, and drop it on people's heads and say just kind of just – just, just, just peace, love, and understanding. Good, come and get me. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what? Aside from that, you know what I mean. Like, what, what other thoughts do you have about about this week? You know, uh, uh, single picks, double picks, anything. Uh, for single picks, I think it's actually a very easy week. Um, again, I'm not in, but I came up with a list of five teams where everyone's going to have at least one of these teams, and. You more or less, regardless of who you have left, I think I think this is like a safe order. Uh, again, I my favorite pick is is very chalky, but you know, sometimes you just you just have to do it. And I, and when I'm when I'm making my rankings, I'm looking at the pool that I was that I was in to to look at. It, it, at this stage, there's about ten percent of the people left in this pool. Really nice to know what the pick availability is for for, uh, for certain teams. Washington is 62, 62 out of 104 have them. Even in singles, if I was still in, I mean, I think you can just t- – Well, that's well, – we, no, don't be embarrassed to say because that's what we're doing in singles. I mean, I'm, I'm saying- not going to say – like, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying if, if I knew 61 other people were doing it, I still might do it. I, I know the EV would be very poor on that, but by doing that, you're fading Jacksonville, who will be pretty popularly picked by the by the hypothetical remaining 40%. Yep. And you are not using teams that will really help your cause. Really, every single team. Houston's is, you know, Houston doesn't count. Houston's a fade at, at 5%. But all these other teams are very, very useful. And I guess I'll say it. One more time, you don't need Washington at any other point in the season. Oh, definitely, yeah, that's right. Until next week. So, <laughs> I, I, I would, I would eat it. I have a very hard time believing they're only going to be thirty-five percent picked. Yeah. I think they will be absolutely smashed in circa. And I would, I would eat the chalk in circa if I somehow got here with Washington. I, I a hundred percent would have used them. Yeah. I think I would. I used them up on the week they lost. Um, yes, I, I was surprised how underpicked they were that week on that Thursday game. Yeah. So I do like Washington as my favorite play. After Washington, I would play Miami. If you have Miami, it, it, it's it's more or less mandatory. Miami's probably better than Washington, but Miami does have week 15. But week 15 has a couple plays that everybody has. That, or, or, there's you know, everyone has New Orleans or Cleveland. Now, Cleveland stuff's going to change after Deshaun Watson. Well, that's not injury, true. But... I mean, because they played both New England, at New Orleans, and Cleveland in in, uh, 
in week nine. Um, but but not but they're not both. Like, I'm thinking about doubles. Like, well, double the, yeah, yeah, this for, this is only for singles. Right, so right. between New Orleans, Cleveland, assuming that they'll still be an okay favorite without Deshaun Watson, Cincinnati. Some people are going to hold out there. You don't necessarily need to have Miami, and they're you're also getting them at a at a premium this week. So I do like Miami. My third play is San Francisco. Uh, very similar uh, thing to look at is Week 15. I like Miami better than San Francisco because San Francisco is a better, a bigger favorite in 15 than Miami is. So uh, between the two, I would rather save San Francisco. And then if you somehow have Buffalo, I, I don't know how, but yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I, I would have. If you have Buffalo, you got to just play them and lose again. And the last play would be Jacksonville. You're going to be eating some chalk there, but in all likelihood, you might not want to play them in 17 anyway. And, you know, the, I hate to say a fade for a team that is likely to be like a 10 point favorite, but Jacksonville is very properly owned. And there's only two spots left for them the remainder of the season. They're 95 out of one, they're 90% available in the pool I'm looking at. I hate to say you're not going to take them in 17, but mathematically speaking, there could be there could be 20 people left in your pool, and if 18 people have them, you probably don't want to take them. So I don't hate ch- taking Jacksonville here. I would never take Houston. Houston's an easy fade if they're 5% pick. And uh, I, I don't really like any of the drops either. I, the only drops are the Chargers and, and Denver. I wouldn't play any of them. I, I would play one of the other five teams. And um, Washington – Miami, San Francisco, Buffalo, Jacksonville in that order. Um, I, I don't think many other things really matter. You might need to look at obviously what your map looks like, but I think it's pretty safe to go in that order and you're not going to leave yourself in too much trouble. But I would not, I would not, I would never do anything crazy this week unless it was doubles. Doubles, you always should be thinking crazy because you're, you can drop to a two point favorite at like 2% ownership and not be on a team like Houston who might be 15% picked to doubles. And that's just, that's an absolute no brainer. Same my, with uh, Jacksonville. My single pick with, uh, with hybrids, we are, we are definitely going Washington this week. Um, yeah. Part of it is also because, I mean, remember if this gets to doubles in 16 to 17, I mean, this would be, this would be fun. We, we've, we've got Philly of the help <laughs> that we could, that we can, a lot of people, but, but a lot of people do. It's about yeah, like half people the that have, not as many as you think, though. But you, so we can say, and in an eleven, people are gonna gonna some people are gonna have to use Sam Jacksonville here. Um, uh, so we're gonna we're so we're 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 content with taking Washington, and just again, just to look ahead again. This is listen. All you could do is put yourself in these types of positions. So if somehow not so so if if the, if the people you know fade our our, our bombs this week. You know, we were fortunate enough to get San Francisco, Miami home, and they still they squeak by with the with the Washingtons and the Jacksonvilles and the Houston's and burning them in that way. Then you get to week number twelve, okay, and look at what week number twelve looks like. You know, keep in mind no one's got Dallas left. It's Kansas City is like four percent owned, and we have them, okay. Detroit, the aforementioned Detroit is like nobody has them, and we have them, so. KC, Detroit, good luck, everybody. Miami, nobody has. So all that's left is like this crap, you know, like like New England, New England, Cincinnati, uh, Tennessee. So you're going to get like a million percent on New England, like for example, you know, or Cincinnati. Minnesota as well. There's four teams. Uh, yeah. Minnesota and Tennessee. Yeah. Well, New England, Minnesota, Tennessee will be the chalkiest teams yeah. in doubles. They'll also yeah. be very chalky in singles. And uh, those, those are going to be automatic fades in all in all formats. And, th- and then if if in fact we get to 13 and, and everybody's fades all the dip tops or whatever it is, then I mean we we do have these like super chalks left. Like we do have Pittsburgh and Tampa. You know what I mean? Like they're going to be 100 percent on whoever's left. But we do have something to play at least, um, or we have. Yeah, you just play. You just play Houston that week. Play, or the aforementioned Tennessee coming off of a week where everybody else is going to play them. You know? And he, and he, and uh, Houston. Yeah, or and and Houston. So and the and the Rams. If uh, you have the you have the Rams, Rams. Uh, uh, no, we don't, we don't have the Rams. We don't have. You don't have it. You don't have Atlanta. No. Uh, th- there's a lot of choices in doubles. It really gets it all. 
it almost really is obvious. I, 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 I said it every time we've talked about doubles, the way people are sorting for their picks is they are sorting by win percentage or mm-hmm. point spread, and they pick maybe the best team they have available, and, the, and their eyes scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, and then once they land on the first team that they know they don't need to use the rest of the year, that's who they pick. So it doesn't matter what the name of the team is. All that matters is they are more favored than somebody else. So you, you need to look a little bit lower and take that next group because it is a very, very big difference. You can just look at what happened. Now, and the other thing is Thursday. Thursday is almost always underpicked. Yeah. And it's a tremendous pick for doubles. Um, we, I did not talk about that last week because I, didn't, I was not aware Chicago was even playing on Thursday. But that was an absolute – automatic pick in doubles because they're going to be underpicked and you're going to be underpicked in a doubles format where everyone has to pick two teams, meaning they're going to crowd more onto Cincinnati and Pittsburgh, two teams that were automatic fades anyway. So uh, tremendous Chicago pick last week for, uh, for doubles. And all you got to do is just look a little bit lower. And that's, and that's why I always, when I'm looking ahead, when I'm looking for my, at my drop, my list of drop teams, I'm really looking way out because if there are doubles or if there's another week where I'm going to want to drop, I want to have one of those teams that's that no one else is going to pick. Everyone can own them. Everyone can have them available, but no one's going to do it. Houston's going to be picked this week. They're mm-hmm. going to be a very good doubles pick in 13. But even if no one picked them this week and no one picked them and no one had picked them the whole season – they're going to see the, the five and the four-point favorites. They're going to take them, and then you can just take Houston as a three-point favorite and at, at, far, at far less ownership. That's where you really make up a lot of ground. And in the doubles format, like you said, it, it, the percentage has doubled the, uh, in, in the end. And I cannot, Cincinnati, well, they end up being like over 50% pick. That's, uh, that's pretty wild when you could have dropped – to some some lower teams and Cincinnati was a team that you really need you really would have wanted to have for a number of other weeks that the pool is going to get to anyway 12 obviously and I I personally would just think of Cincinnati more as a fade but in all likelihood the pool, a doubles every week format still probably going to get to week 14 anyway unless there's some absolute carnage but even if it gets down to six people if I have Cincinnati left I'm either making an equity deal, which no one ever agrees to those anyway in Survivor Pool, because right. they should just, oh, we've got to make a deal because we've gone this far. No, I have Cincinnati left, and the five of you don't. So Exactly. Thank you. Um, yeah. I think, I think very basic week. I, I think it's, it's yeah. very hard to make. Uh, I don't think there's any tough decisions. Uh, Detroit, I think, is a, an automatic save. I would, I would take Jacksonville over them, regardless of what the EV says, because – Detroit just has way too many spots to place. And if you're still in, I, I just don't see how you just wouldn't need Detroit. So I would, I would save Detroit. I would fade Houston. I wouldn't drop uh, to, to the Chargers or Denver. Those are like the potential drop teams. And I would definitely save Dallas. I would never play Dallas this week. I, I just don't see a point. I would rather take him next week because – if you take Dallas this week, you got him at a – is it ten, ten and a half? Yeah. A ten and a half point favorite where you could take Washington if you have them or you can take Jacksonville at six and a half, so you're dropping four. But in 12, Dallas is – are they a ten? I haven't looked I haven't I have nine, look I have at nine, headlines. I have nine and a half. They have a look at headlines on DraftKings here. I feel like, yeah, it's definitely, okay, it's nine and a half on FanDuel. You're going to be dropping, if you don't have Kansas City, Detroit, Miami, you're dropping like more than, you're dropping five, six yep. points. And you, you're you dropping to a group you do not want to take. You do not want to take Cincinnati, Tennessee, Minnesota in 12. So do not take Dallas this week if you're going to take, New England, Cincinnati, Tennessee, Minnesota next week. Don't do it. If you're going to take someone else, if you have Kansas City, if you have Detroit and it makes sense to play them because they still are really good, they're going to, 
the longer you hold on to these teams that have multiple spots, the more valuable it is just to save them. So Detroit at this point, I look at 14, 15 before you make any decisions. And the same with Miami. I mean, I'd rather I'm not, I'd rather not take Miami next week. I'd, I'd rather save them for 14 or 15. So, so take them this week, but don't take them next week. Uh, so l- look at look at what you're gaining versus what you're not uh, losing in the next week. And if you take Dallas this week, you're dropping you're dropping to a chalk group, or you're going to have to take a team like Detroit. You should probably save. So I I like saving Dallas for next week if you have Dallas somehow. But I I, I would never have Dallas. I would have gone all in on them, them last week. And okay. I think uh, who's the guy that has this? Um, there was some guy that was in really, really good shape. Like, did he I'm trying to think? There was like Circa guy. last year. Yeah, no, no, no. no. Now um, he, I, I hope he didn't. I think he might have lost at Buffalo. I think or something like that. There's somebody that said, "Oh, he's good." So this one guy in the Discord, he has a big double pick pool down to 21 people. Oh yeah, so and, and he's in a tiny pool down from fifty to five. All right, so we got we got other guys to root for, whatever. But um, yeah, if you guys want to go into the Discord that you give us Discord and, and ask questions, we're more than happy to answer them. Try to be as specific as you, as possible, and uh, that'll do it. Uh, when is the? Wait, wait, when, wait, wait, when, wait, let me let me jump one, one more thing. So sorry. I I told one person if they if they uh, if they wrote down who they had played, I, I was going to take a look at it, and I just posted a link. Okay. I, I, I did a, a mapping for someone on two plus a long time poster on two plus two and it was a good brain exercise. And it, it helped. It didn't help for your pool just because your, your picks are so good and automatic. It's not yeah. worth any discussion, but I just posted a link. If, if, it, if, if you want a little bit of help, I, I do have some time. I can take a look, but I, I want to know literally every single team. If I'm going to, yeah. if I'm going to take a look, I want, I literally want every single team that you've chosen so far and what the rules are, please leave, put all the rules in because what? is it, it is it is, is it uh cold enough for the next ski trip or no uh we are not we are not go, uh traveling this uh this year for christmas so there's a local uh, hit, uh, bump that i might take my daughter to but my my brother-in-law got me the shirt a few weeks ago it's uh wor- called world's biggest fan of taylor swift's boyfriend's team very, nice. was, very I nice. thought this would be a. I thought this would be a. Perfect oh, I just wanted to guys. compare this yeah. year's video of your daughter last year's with the skiing. That's all. We got I, I, yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah. I, I'm gonna look into that because she definitely wants to go, but we're, we are not going to Lake Tahoe this year. Uh, so I would, there's a little ski place. Okay. I, I live in Kansas City, an hour and a half away. Is it would not resemble uh, what I, what she skied on last year, but I, I do need to look into that. And I promised my son Lawrence that he could ski this year. Uh, he turns five in January. So he's, he's at that age that he, that he's ready if he wants to be. All right, guys, good luck, everybody. And we will get back at it next week. See you later See you next week. Hey, uh, Eric, what, uh, uh, say, so for next,